rowing, just keep going up. When you went. Yeah. Ridiculous. Six months for that. Good morning you lovely lot. Um, welcome back to my allotment diaries. My name is Emma. These are my allotment diaries. If allotmenting, growing your own food, being out in the garden and watching videos on outdoors and flowers and people killing their plants is your vibe, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel because I think it might be right up your street. <laughs> and thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Thank you to everyone who's been leaving me comments or giving me a thumbs up on a video. It makes such a big difference to the algorithm and it um, recommends my YouTube videos to more and more people which is incredible. I know I'm getting quite a few new subscribers so hello, welcome, thank you so much. It all means so much to me that you're here following my journey, following my gardening journey and that we are encouraging and inspiring each other in our in this community that I've built um, and this community has just got one step better because you can now purchase a t-shirt from me and yes I won't stop going on about them I love them I've got them in every one of the women's colors uh, the whack it in t-shirt just spreading the allotment vibe basically and uh, if you don't feel comfortable wearing it because you think it's a bit of an innuendo I completely understand that's fine that's cool um, <laughs> I will be releasing new merchandise later on in the year with a different slogan different stuff so if this isn't your vibe don't worry there'll be more stuff coming soon um, and I completely understand I'm here today I did have some stuff to plant out so I've got some French beans at home that are like that big which really need planting out here but I'm not going to do that today because I've been away for a week and it still needs quite a lot of work getting it back into ship shape um, and also I got my seed craft subscription box so if you um, a lot of you have subscribed to this as well, which is incredible. Nick will be so happy. So I have a discount code below. It's, I'll cover my dress. I'm not very good at doing that. Seedcraft. And it's a seed subscription box. And they basically send you seeds every month to sow on your allotment plot or in your garden. Um, all vegetable seeds, things like that. And I have a discount code below, uh, which will get you, I think, 15% off your first box quite cool um, a lot of you have signed up to it already and are really loving it so it is a really great thing especially if you don't know what to sew or you can't be bothered to look it up like me <laughs> if you're a lazy gardener this is for you so in this week's in this month's box I got some swede um, some arcade lettuce and some golden beetroot and also some runner beans but I've, I think I've got enough runner beans growing at the plot so I'll keep those um, but these I'm going to sew outside today just start whacking some more stuff in uh, pumpkin update here we go <laughs> the first of many happy to report that they survived their first night on the plot these two are very much alive this one over here very much alive so they didn't just, you know, completely die straight away. They look quite happy. They seem to survive the night. A couple of leaves are snapped because of me, my bad handling of them. Um, someone said to cut them off if they've snapped because slugs and snails will love them. I don't know, I might just leave them. I, they, I'm not having too much of a problem with slugs and snails right now. I feel a bit smug saying that because normally, like at this time of year, everything's being ravaged by slugs and snails and I'm really struggling. I actually struggled more during sort of March and April and now everything seems to be okay. In the whole of May, things don't seem to have been eaten. So I'm actually doing okay for slugs and snails. However, I do have a little nifty trick up my sleeve that some of you recommended. So one of the ways that a lot of you recommended that I stop slugs and snails is to use ashes from like a fire. So when you burn something you can spread the ash around and apparently they don't like going over that. Well I've just been camping and um, felt like the weirdest thing ever but I collected all the ash from the campfire that we had and I'm going to spread it around my pumpkins and see if it stops the slugs and snails. So, so far they don't seem to be any, but you know, I don't want to be an idiot and just think there's not going to be any because there might be some later. So we're going to do that. I'm always very interested in trying out different slug and snail defenses because there are just so many that people swear by. Oh, dusty. So this is the ash. Feels like I'm spreading someone's ashes around my plot though that would actually be very very good natural material so in fact when I die I want my ashes to be spread over a vegetable patch I can come back as a radish so very 
really interested to see if this works. You can imagine what a stress it was to get this ash home with a, like a whole car full of camping gear. I'm sure people thought I was crazy when I was like scooping it up with a dustpan and brush, but you know, needs must. I can imagine because slugs and snails are quite slithery and sticky, going over this gets it all stuck to their bellies. I mean, it's stuck to my gloves already, you know. I don't know. It looks weird, but I guess it's, it's good for the environment. It's, it's natural material, so I'm happy to try it. So, I noticed that these sweet peas are a little bit in need of... I don't know, really, because they seem to be clinging on okay. I think what I've done is I've planted too many. I've planted too many in the same place, but... Well, you know, you're here now, so you might as well make the best of it, guys. I don't know what I can do for you. I literally don't know what I can do. I could probably tie you in a little bit more. Right, come here. Come here. It's all right. What we'll do is we'll just make sure that you're all tied into there like that. Keep growing, just keep going up, okay? Keep going up the archway. You can do it. You're going the wrong way. I don't know where you're going. Oh, these plants. I do see a couple of flowers though, just about to come into bloom at the top here, which is exciting. Some of these are looking good. See, this is a bit of a, an issue because there's nothing in this bit. So this is, they're gonna have to jump. And this guy's doing quite a good job. You're doing excellent, mate, well done. So once you get up there, you know, you'll be all right, guys. You just gotta get past this bit. And then this side, it's just like, it's just too many. I've just planted too flipping many. I didn't think they'd live. I mean, now I'm getting little flowers on them now. It's quite exciting. But I mean, I planted like a million, thinking I'd get about three, because they'd die. And I've got a million, <laughs> so. thinking now where to put these seeds so I've got some beetroot swede and lettuce um, I really think this bed here this was supposed to be my salady kind of bed these look like they're almost going to be done I don't actually know when these will be done I don't even know if they've become anything Do you know what I mean it's garlic I think this is garlic the shallots I don't know no idea let's pull one up no they didn't do nothing why did that happen they always do this, they always go like like this. And I think it's because my soil is just too damp, it's just too boggy, or I sow it at the wrong time or whatever, but they always do this to me. I, I swear to God, I will not get one. Watch this. Six months of sowing. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> Atrocious. Ridiculous. Can't think of any more rubbish ad adjectives. But basically, every single one. Absolute crap. So here is my shallot harvest. <laughs> Absolute rubbish. Every single one of them, rubbish. And I knew these wouldn't work. I knew it. Six months of growing for that. Was it worth it? No, it's crap. <laughs> Absolute rubbish. <laughs> In fact, let's, let's pull up one of the garlics. I think I'd rather know. I think I'd rather know now if they're all gonna be crap. Oh, I get my hopes up. Oh, mm, okay, oh, look. 
Look, I think I know what that is. I think that's white rot. I think that's white rot. You see the white, like the fungus. I think that's what that is. I think it's white rot. And I think you get that when your bed gets too boggy or something. What a shame, something's obviously been eating it as well. So I open that up, but it really smells like garlic as well. Oh, it is white rot. It's what it is, rot. Can I not remove the rot? No, I can't. It really smells of garlic. Oh, oh, it smells so much like garlic. It's such a shame. Bloody white rot. Six months for that. Six months for that. For that. Don't ask me right now if growing your own food is worth it because right now my answer is no. Bloody not. Oh, look who's turned up. Look who's turned up. Say hello, Rocky. Oh, straight in bed. Right, can you come out of there, please? Because I'm just weeding it. You've been all right. Hello. Hello. Do you want some treats? What's that bird? Get him, Rocky. Get him. I don't like that noise at all, do you? Do you want some cat treats? Why are you such a pain in the bum sometimes? No, come on. Wait a second. Wait a second. Will you wait a second? Rocky! Now look what's happened. All because of you and your impatience. Rocky! There you go. Right. There we go. Good boy. Good boy. You can stay, but don't knock anything up. Right, I think what we'll do is we'll put a row of beetroot in here. I don't even know if this soil is good for germination anymore like it just seems really full of rocks and things actually what I might do is make that like that so make my two these are called drills I don't know why we call them drills they're basically lines in the soil right put your lines in what I might do is water that before I put the seeds in turned into a bleeding puddle. Drain away then, drain away. Go on, go on. It's turned sludgy. This might be why the uh, garlic and onion didn't work in this bed. Maybe it's not very good drainage here. Oh, it's a bit sludgy. Right, beetroot. This is a golden, golden beetroot. So I'm guessing it's kind of like a yellow colour. I guess anyway. Right, oh look, proper amount of beetroot seeds, not five like we had in that other pack. I can scatter them now like that. Fantastic. Give it a pat. And then give it one more water. show you something that I've been doing this year that I haven't actually told you about because I wasn't sure if it'd work. I thought if it works it's going to be genius and um, I think it is working and I want to share it with you because that's what a vlog's all about, sharing stuff isn't it? When I planted out all my brassicas, brassicas are doing really well by the way so if anyone's worried about the brassicas, don't be. I'm a brassica expert this year and they are absolutely fine, not even one little bit of damage, not even one bit of damage, incredible and under here too. 
amazing. But basically, when I planted them out, I had a load of extra ones. I couldn't cram any more into that bed because they do get quite big brassicas. I thought what I would do is plant them around the plot as a sort of experiment. So the idea being, I can have a look at the brassica and if it's been eaten by slugs and snails, that's probably an area where they're gonna congregate. If they haven't been eaten, I could probably plant something else out there. It's probably safe. And also using them as a bit of like a, a bait like bait for slugs and snails, so they eat them and don't eat the other crops basically because they love them. So for instance, and I think it has worked because look down here, just planted out a bit of swede here because look, these ones have been munched. This one's fine, he's not been munched at all. And then I planted a few around my cosmos because I really didn't want my cosmos, oh, that's a dead flower, let's de deadhead him. I do really didn't want my cosmos to get eaten. So I planted a few around here, but look, he's not been eaten and he's not been eaten. <laughs> I've totally lost the point of what my experiment was but I think what it was was just seeing what gets eaten so I basically put them out and I didn't care if they got eaten or not but most of them have survived and also I'm hoping that slugs and snails like them more than the actual other crops and so they kind of eat them and leave everything else alone but they haven't eaten any of it so I'm not sure <laughs> I'm not sure what the experiment proves I don't know what that means, um, but I thought it was a good idea and I wanted to share it. I don't know what it means, but there we go. <laughs> oh, look at these! <laughs> oh, guys. Guys, you're doing so well. I'm so proud of you. Someone made a really funny comment uh, in my last video and basically said, Emma, don't you think it's a weird coincidence that you went away for a week and then everything at your allotment did really well and survived and all grew? <laughs> I think I am the biggest predator at my allotment plot. Like, forget the slugs and snails and the birds. Forget all that. It's me. It's me. I'm the problem. Hi, it's me. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you do enjoy the vlogs. If you do, do subscribe, give me a like, leave me a little comment below. Let me know what you're getting up to in your allotment plots and I will see you again in my next vlog. See you in my next vlog, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. I feel like such an idiot when I say like bye because I, obviously I'm not saying like I now have to pack up and go home <laughs> it's not just like instant oh god